Sometimes I just feel like releasing a video about some tips that I didn't even know if anyone asked for. And that is this video. If you don't use these tips, hopefully at least it's entertaining. Alrighty, let's get started. Planting tons of crops can be really tedious, especially if you also intend to place down fertilizer on top of your planted crops. Luckily for us, there is a way to make planting crops much, much easier. All you need to do is hold down right click and place your mouse anywhere on the screen. Now you just walk over your tilled soil and the crops will automatically be planted. This means you do not have to aim your mouse to place down your crops. Just run across all of your tilled soil and plant those crops with basically no effort. This also works with flooring. Hold down right click and run around. The flooring will simply be placed down under your feet. Nice. Crows are incredibly annoying in Stardew Valley. At least we can place down a scarecrow to keep our crops safe from those pesky crows. There are 8 unique rare crows in the game. If you have the dedication to collect all 8 of these rare crows, you'll be rewarded with a recipe to craft a deluxe scarecrow. The deluxe scarecrow works exactly like any other of the scarecrows. The only difference is that these guys have double the range of the normal scarecrows. This is awesome for players who have huge farms and need to protect many crops. Or for players who pay special attention to decorating and scarecrows just don't fit in to their farm. After completing the community center and fully upgrading your farmhouse, you will get a new option at Robin's Carpentry Store, the community upgrades. The second upgrade actually is really useful. For a mass of 300,000 gold, Robin will clear up some obstructions across the world of Stardew Valley, effectively allowing us to get around the world faster. Here are some of the shortcuts that will be unlocked after purchasing the community upgrade. Some of them are really helpful and some of them are kind of random. Now if only we could fit our horse in some of these shortcuts, now that would be awesome. There are quite a few super expensive endgame items and buildings that you can buy in Stardew Valley, but one of the best ones is the Statue of Endless Fortune. These cost 1 million gold each and you can buy them at the casino. These will produce love gifts when it is someone's birthday. If it isn't someone's birthday, they can produce either gold bars, iridium bars, omni geodes, or diamonds. Now those are some awesome rewards. The best use for these statues is pretty much just to collect these resources and then make crystallariums. These statues produce gold and iridium bars, and we need both of those to craft crystallariums. With a couple of these, you will literally be swimming in crystallariums before you know it. If you really, really hate the skull cavern, but still need iridium ore to craft sprinklers and other helpful things, there is a way to get iridium ore without ever going to the skull cavern and without being super rich. First, you could just rely on your statue of perfection that you will get on the first day in your third year. They produce some iridium ore every single day, but you could also build a bunch of fish ponds and fill them all up with super cucumbers. Fish ponds with super cucumbers do have a chance to produce iridium ore and while it is a very low chance this can be an effective method of getting iridium ore if you really do hate the skull cavern do you want to be an ultimate Stardew Valley pro? Then hit subscribe right now. And hey, come follow me on Twitch. I play Stardew Valley, I play Minecraft, and any other game that seems fun. So do it, you won't regret it. Do you love treasure? Of course you do, who doesn't? Well, you can get a 60% chance of finding treasure when fishing. All you need to do is use a magnet as bait, use a treasure hunter fishing tackle, and pick the pirate profession at level 10 fishing. This will give you a 50% chance of finding a fishing treasure chest. Then make sure you fish on the best possible luck day. This will further increase your chance of finding a fishing treasure chest by 5%. The lucky charm will also increase the chances of finding a fishing chest. And lastly, eat as many luck buffs as you can. For each extra point in luck will increase the chance by half a percent. After all of the preparation, you will get a 60% chance of finding a treasure when fishing.
Do you love treasure so much that you just need more of it? Good, because finding treasure floors in the skull cavern is actually incredibly easy with some preparation. Make extra sure that you have obtained the secret charm by bringing a rabbit's foot to the van by the Jojo Mart. This special charm will permanently increase your daily luck. Next, get yourself two lucky rings. You can easily find these by panning at the dig site on Ginger Island. Then, cook some ginger ale with Key's special seasoning and sacrifice three prismatic shards for a magic rock candy. Now you have everything you need. Wait patiently for the best possible luck day, then enter this skull cavern. Based on the chances, you should get a treasure floor every five floors in this skull cavern. That is extremely often, and you will get those sweet, sweet rewards in no time. Do you need an auto petter? You will probably get one. Do you need some prismatic shards? No problem. These treasure floors have got you covered. We can all agree that pegs are probably the most profitable animal in the game. They produce truffles every single day and truffles sell for a good amount. So does that mean that pigs win and no animal can stand a chance against them? Well, not really. The ostrich really can compete against the pig and this is why. Pigs are unable to find truffles during winter, meaning they are completely useless for a fourth of the year. Secondly, pigs need space outside of the barn to actually find truffles. This means that a barn with pigs actually takes up quite a bit of space on your farm. The ostrich is a unique animal. To make ostriches profitable, you are going to need to get your ostrich to maximum friendship. Ostriches produce eggs and iridium quality ostrich eggs are insanely valuable. Ostrich eggs are unique when compared to the other eggs in the game. Ostrich eggs will produce 10 servings of mayonnaise and the produced mayonnaise mayonnaise will match the quality of the ostrich egg. That means that you should produce 10 iridium quality mayonnaise with each ostrich egg. That is actually a huge amount of gold if you have like 12 ostriches and they have little to no maintenance. Once you get them to max friendship, you won't need to try and collect their goods every single day. That's right, order grabbers work on ostriches. So yeah, ostriches are incredibly convenient. Their products sell for a ton and they produce eggs throughout the entire year. Do you need a ton of hardwood for some reason? Probably not, but just in case you did, there are hardwood farming methods that will actually blow you away. All you need to do is activate the Shrine of Challenge in your regular mines. This will turn the mines into a more dangerous version. Now all you need to do is enter the mines on floor 41. It seems that a large tree stump will spawn on this floor almost every single time. Just hit it down to collect two hardwood. Leave the mines and re-enter on the same floor. You can collect hundreds of pieces of hardwood in a single day. It is incredibly effective and kind of a game changer. And those are some random tips I wanted to share. If you like this video, please do hit subscribe and come check me out on Twitch sometime. It is really fun chatting and interacting with you guys. But for now, I will see you in the next video.